Let me recapitulate the grand narrative of the course. The source of all from which all else flows was the explosion of material wealth that surpassed all precedent in the long 20th century from 1870 to 2010 or so. The long 20th century saw those of us who belong to the upper middle class and live in the industrial core of the world economy saw us become far richer than even the most utopian theorists of previous centuries could possibly imagine. And from this explosion flowed important processes and sets of forces, which will constitute the major themes of this course. The very first is that history became economic because of the wealth explosion. Um, the long 20th century became the first century ever in which the economy was not the background against which history took place, you know, a kind of slowly changing thing where one generation was like the previous one, but instead something that was transforming itself every generation and those transformations. That process of creative destruction, as Austrian economist Joseph Schumpeter called it, was absolutely key to everything. The economy was the dominant arena of events and changes, and economic changes were the driving force behind other changes, in a way never seen before. Um, the world globalized, too, in a way that had never been the case before. Things happening on other continents became not just minor fringe factors, but were among the central determinants of what happened in nearly every single place that humans lived. And of course, technological cornucopia was the driver, enabling the enormous increase in material wealth. You know, its essential prerequisite, in fact, was the explosion in human technological knowledge. This required not just a culture and an educational system that created large numbers of scientists and engineers and means of communication and memory so that they could build on previous discoveries, but also that the market economy be structured in a way that made it worth people's while to funnel resources to scientists and engineers so that they could do their job, and the growth of institutions, not just modern science and engineering, but that was a big part, that could um, discover, develop, and deploy technologies at a previously unprecedented and, in fact, miraculous rate. Um, industrial research labs to discover and develop new ideas about how to manipulate nature, modern corporations to develop and deploy ideas about manipulating nature and also about you know, organizing humans. And these had enormous consequences. Um, the population explosion and then the demographic transition that is getting us down to two child or less per couple families and a stable world population of between 9 and 10 billion, it looks like, come 2050, is just one of them. And the rise of forces, powerful forces for feminism and broader for inclusion were, in some sense, side effects, in some sense, the main event, were all driven by the economic cornucopia that technology made possible and by the political economic consequences of that vast increase in wealth. Um, but all was not great. Governments mismanaged, creating insecurity and dissatisfaction. The governments of the long 20th century had little clue as to regulate the unself-regulating market to maintain prosperity or ensure opportunity or produce substantial equality. Moreover, you can use technological powers to manipulate nature and organize humans for good or for ill. The long 20th century's tyrannies were more brutal and more barbaric than those of any previous century. And they were in strange, complicated, and confused ways closely related to the forces that made the explosion of wealth so great. Nobody earlier would have imagined that people would have been killed by the tens of millions over disputes about how to organize the economy. And yet that's what the Stalinists of Russia and the Nazis of Germany did. So I give this course to engrave these lessons on our collective memories, um, to tell the story, because it's a very important story for you, and the sub-stories. The story starts in 1870, 
with humanity still trapped so that better technology meant not just higher living standards, not higher living standards for the typical human, but rather more people and more resource scarcity that ate up nearly, if not all, the potential for material and betterment coming from what was then slowly growing, um, slowly growing technology. Um, now let me move into a part of this quick recap where the slides are intended not for you to read while you listen to me, but instead the slides are more intended for references to you. Um, what was the principal source of the long 20th century's economic revolution? The transformation and routinization of invention via the building on top of modern science, engineering, and on top of the modern, of the market economy, the modern corporation and the industrial research lab. The communities of engineering practice to understand and the corporations to deploy. Those were the things that supercharged growth plus the cheap ocean and rail transport that destroyed distance as a cost and brought economies all over the world cheek by jowl. Um, if I were leftier than I am, I would stress the ability to greatly ramp up the rate of exploitation and so devote much more of society's production to investment and capital accumulation. Um, but I'm not. I would say, um, I would say that a great deal of progress was made with respect to inequality and indeed common humanity during the long 20th century for reasons that were closely linked to the technological revolutions that we will consider later on. But I'll also say do not be too sanguine, too calm, too triumphalist. Um, here we have someone usually thought of as a good guy in the long 20th century, American progressive President Woodrow Wilson. And his ideas about racial hierarchies in America. Um, it's not just white people are better than others. It's that very, very narrow classes of white people from Northern Europe, probably not including Ireland, are better than others. But there were other people. Um, Abraham Lincoln would qualify as a racist um, in our day saying that it's never, never likely to be possible that for white and black races to live on terms of equality, and he's all for having his race have the higher status. But on the other hand, he says that we take the Declaration of Independence seriously, that all men are created equal. Theodore Roosevelt, um, Theodore Roosevelt very strongly believed in white Anglo-Saxon Puritan culture, um, and values, but he also believed that you could join the real Americans um, if you wished, and that you should wish, that you were never an American by birth, but ha could become an American also by adoption or by election, and in fact you had to repeatedly, generation after generation, adopt and elect to become a contributor to the American utopian project of freedom and prosperity. But failures of inclusion, um, failures of inclusion are only a small part of what has gone wrong in the 20th century. Tyrannies, enormous wealth gulfs, um, failures to manage the economy to produce full employment, um, all of these are greatly worth worrying about and will in fact confront us in the 21st century. And so the long 20th century, 1870 to 2010, is really the first century in which we can think that a truly human world may soon be within our grasp with amazingly productive human accomplishments, with a great deal of increase in and spread of human freedom and prosperity. But a lot has gone wrong in the process. War and tyranny, failure of technological and organizational diffusion outside of the North Atlantic to much of the world. In fact, the development of underdeveloped. Poor countries are poor today, not because the rich world left them alone, rather the opposite, and enormous wealth gulfs in the world as a whole and even within countries. Um, 
And the deep question. We now have the wealth that any previous generation would have thought would have been sufficient for us to build a utopia. And yet we clearly have not managed to build a utopia. We are at most just slouching towards it. Why have we not managed to build a utopia? That's the end of this recap. Um, so go to your reading. <laughs>